Well, today and the good people behind us, a lot of these people, you know, from the community, aside from myself, Wayne Winston and Lyle Hassan, you know, we have a number of great people. Look, everyone is entitled to have their chance to do their job. I, for one, don't think that you can do it in one year. A lot of people are saying that Carmela Levy David needs to be fired. And for me, there's nothing that you can really turn around within a year. Right now, our kids cannot read at the proper level. In fact, 92% of our children in third grade cannot read at their proper level this second. When it comes to reading, only 82% of them can read at their proper level in third grade. That is a straight school to prison pipeline. We already know that that's exactly what that is in our communities. It leads to them crime, it leads to trouble later on in school, it leads to them not being able to get jobs. The issue here is not about termination, it is about mediation. And mediation is what we have, it's what we need, because we can't lose another school superintendent. We've had five, excuse me, the last five years we've had three school superintendents. The last one left in a, thief in a night and went over to an adjacent school system after the Bridgeport school system paid for it. Carmela Love You David has a plan for this city. In fact, it has no music curriculum. I know for a fact one of the greatest things that's going to happen is that it's about the kids and not the adults. With mediation, we could have teachers say what they need to say, Carmela say what she needs to say, and we get that sorted out because we can't lose another superintendent. If we lose a superintendent, it'll be at least three more years before we get through the system. She quits, you've got another nation, nationwide search. You also have a third year that the kids will not be able to read. Because if you can't read and, and, and write in third grade, you can't do it in sixth grade. That is what the problem is. And the music curriculum here is going to be phenomenal like nowhere else because we have a commitment from Mr. Ronald Cool Bell, yes, that one from Cool and the Gang, to come to the city of Bridgeport and assist its music program, which does not exist, that was actually canceled by um, someone from the Board of Ed. And that's when it becomes an issue. Our kids need those arts. Our kids need that support. And someone like Cool finding a place, Mr. Robert Cool Bell, like Bridgeport, worthy of his nonprofit, Cool Kids, it's phenomenal. It's only one of the things that she's working on. And how do I know that's real? Because I helped to make that happen. There's other people here that have additional information about education and what we're doing right now. It's not about anything else but mediation, not termination. Our kids can't afford to go three more years without a school superintendent. We've lived it, and we are now officially at the bottom of the achievement gap. And that is horrible. Yeah, hello, my name is Lyle Hassan Salakhan Jones, and I'm out here in support of the superintendent of schools. In reference to when I looked at the test scores of the students in the city of Bridgeport, we're at the bottom in reading and writing, and it's been that way for the last 20 years. So we bring in a superintendent who has turned many districts around throughout her career, and we brought her in to turn this district around. But any time it seems like we bring somebody in to get something right, there's always a group of people that just don't want something right because people hate change. And it's not about how we feel about personalities, but it's about the children. And if someone can come and help raise our children and raise their level of awareness on an academic level, we have to support that. We can have disagreements, but let's just give this sister a chance to see if she can elevate the learning in our community so that our children can have a better future. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm out here to support um, Dr. Carmela Levy-David to remain our superintendent, to push her agenda forward, and to make our school system work. I was on the Board of Ed for 12 years in the chin, at one point the chair of the Board of Education, and we've had turnover in superintendents, and here's a superintendent that has all the credentials, all the skill sets, all the knowledge. She has a plan of action, and we're not letting her implement it. She's been here one year. She's made amazing changes in one year, but she hasn't been able to do the work that she needs to do because we're fighting her. The Board of Education is fighting her. 
again, it, it, to stop her from doing the work she's doing. And we can't operate like that. We have to be able to change the trajectory of our children. Our, you know, literally our children are dying and going to jail. And if we don't do something to change that, it's going to continue to happen. She has, a, she has a plan to raise the test scores, to teach, prepare a teaching and learning agenda that allows our children to begin to reason and think and, and be able to pass these tests and go on to be successful, not just on a local level or national, but internationally. And we need to let her do her work. And I just definitely have to far, um believe that we are not so far gone that we can't agree that our children deserve every opportunity to thrive. I'm Gladys Walker Jones. I'm a former um, school principal for just shy of um, 20 years. Got injured and um, still healing. So Dr. Carmela David, Levy David has my full support. And um, again, if there's any conversations that's not prioritizing our kids, then they need to simply be muted. So I have a question for you, for you guys. I have to play devil advocate, right? Oh, yeah. So I have to ask some questions. On, and and, and one of the go. things that I hear is mediation, mediation, mediation. But to me, I'm not sure where that the came biggest from. thing that I've seen and I've read is the lack of communication from the superintendent to opposing uh, board members mm -hmm. and, and parents. So, so what do you guys have to say about that? Because now it's like it's all about mediation, but there was never no transparency or communication <laughs> from what I've read and what I've seen. Mm -hmm. yeah. First of all, first of all, the board has a certain role. Okay. Okay. The board of education is a board of education. It's a nine-member equal board. Okay. Folk are taking taking it and turning it into their um, soapbox and want to get up there and say whatever it is they want to say. The facts of the matter is they have to be concerned about student outcome. Okay. That is what the superintendent is for. She does the day to day. They're not qualified to be a superintendent, okay? Their credentials do not speak to that, okay? These are people that are elected or were voted in by the board. Um, there are certain seats on that board right now that are not elected by the full body of Bridgeport, okay? It's, they were selected to be on the board by, by um, the votes of the, of, the, of the board itself. So their focus is supposed to be on the superintendent to help them to bring our scores up that they just probably told you that are at the bottom of the barrel. Okay, that is the focus of the Board of Education and they're supposed to be a cohesive board to work together and when they vote on something, okay, it's supposed to be, that's it. They're not supposed to hold a grievance because, okay, I lost that vote. So I'm gonna jump up and down and act like a child. Uh, and, and say the superintendent is wrong. The superintendent is qualified to do her job, period. So let her do her job, okay. which is to bring up those scores. So I, I recently read that over 90% of the teachers have uh, no confidence in the superintendent. Like, what, what do you guys have to say about that? 87, so look at the number. 87% of, of, of the teachers do not live in the district. 87 percent so that's matter? so that's close to 90 percent it does matter yes does it matter. does when sir. you talk about yes, statistics does, you sir. need to look at the end value okay. how many people were actually surveyed okay mm -hmm. and so if you don't have enough people who are actually surveyed then that data is considered invalid unreliable so let's talk about real data okay and talk about the real teachers who are in the trenches who are trying to do the work so these are the questions people want to ask. I mean, want to know. So yeah, but you want to make sure oh, you're absolutely. yes that you're you know aggregate you know you're looking closely at that information. Yeah. Right. All right. So I'll add to that. Bridgeport school system has been messed up a long time. We know it's been failing a long time. You have people to get offended in these board of ed meetings that are even on the board of some even teachers that come in um, and they're like, hey, you know, it's not a failing school. You know, my kids aren't failures. It's not that your kids are failures. The test scores say whether or not the school system is failing, no matter how you feel about it. If third grade kids right now mm -hmm. in this school system cannot do math, in other words, 92% cannot do that. That is the direct school to prison pipeline that black people have been dealing with forever. Decades. Decades. Now, when you get to reading, 82%. If you can't read, you can't do nothing. 
You can't read Maya Angelou. You can't do science. You can't do history. And it's hard to do math. It is absolutely mm -hmm. the school to prison pipeline. So when you have a superintendent, and actually a pretty damn good one, yes. and someone has personal issues because teachers don't see it eye to eye, um, they're able to get their union out and, you know, push on that and bring them in and raise heck at the board meeting. And I'm with no decorum now, no decorum. You know, yelling, screaming, insulting, just bananas like, you know, you out there at a... The at, stuff that they would never accept from a child in the classroom. And would never accept, and even in other districts. Right. Because the police would have taken them out of there. But it's Bridgeport, so that stuff's allowed to happen. So at the end of the day... Well, they assume. Our yeah, children can't read today. If you, for whatever reason, got rid of this teacher, excuse me, uh, superintendent today, or she left, we got at least three years before another one comes in. That means if you can't read and write in the third grade, now our kids are in the sixth grade. It's gonna take them at least another year past that. So what are we talking, 2028, 20, 2029? Oh, we finally got a school system yeah. superintendent we like. Okay, well guess what? Those kids are now in high school and they have to start right where Carmela Levy David is right now, bringing out the statistics with the actual thing, and they'll be in the same place because they did not have a curriculum, because they did not have the right school um, tools set up in order for them to not fail. So this is like the place we cannot fail. We have one that is here, and factually, most people, mm -hmm. most superintendents do not want to come to Bridgeport mm -hmm. because there's people here that stand right there behind us and tell them we run people out of Bridgeport if you don't like it. You got to get on Bridgeport side because they feel it's their side. You got to get on Bridgeport side because they represent Bridgeport. We represent Bridgeport That's correct. and we have parents out there that represent Bridgeport that have never even been in this room or heard what they had to say. We can't afford to have another superintendent leave. Right. And Our now, kids can't wait. And just real quickly, I worked in the school system. I retired because they tried to put me in a classroom. And I said, I'm not going in that classroom because either two things going to happen. I'm not going to be retired or I'm going to be in the penitentiary. Excuse my expression. That's how out of control these kids were. They would leave the class, walk around the school, like they were in the mall. You hear me? I mean, when I went to school as a kid, if you skipped, you left the building. You didn't stay in the school. There was no control in that school system, no leadership by the principals and nothing. And, I, and this is why kids fail. Our kids, I'm going to tell you, this what really blew my mind. They were coming as a freshman. They would fail, get all Fs. They would make them a sophomore and tell them they had credit recovery, they give them that. They get a sophomore, junior, they never even finish getting the credits for being a sophomore, now they're a junior. Now when they become a senior, they may be, I'm hypothetical, I'm saying, they may be 75 credits behind. They're not even supposed to be a senior. So they put a program in place called credit recovery that you can recover enough credits in 90 days and you've been there four years failing so that you can graduate. This is the kind of system we had. They said the only thing they had to do to get that 75 credits, not that they had to do the work, just let your attendance be good for that 90 days so we can show that you was coming to school and they recover lost credits so they can put them out and they still was dumb as they was when they came in as a freshman. So when you got a principal coming in now putting that pressure on the I mean superintendent on administrators and teachers to do what they should have been doing on time. This is why they're having problems because people don't like change. You get comfortable doing nothing after a while. Mm. You get used to doing nothing after a while and this is what they've been doing. So somebody come in and say no we're going to do it like this. That's when you get all this rebellion and they all come together and don't want to do the work. And we have to realize, right, what's so crazy about this, it's our kids. That's right. That's right. It's black and brown kids. Mm -hmm. They, they want to just throw to the wayside. Just like now I heard, they build our high schools and don't care how they build them. 
They build new high schools for us. Harden ain't got a gym big enough for elementary people, right? right. right? They mm -hmm. say the same thing is going on with Bassett. It ain't big enough. Mm -hmm. See, they only come in our community. You go out of fear for somewhere, they build a school so big, they have two gyms, a gym for the girl, a gym for the boys, a swimming pool, a football field, mm -hmm. soccer field, mm -hmm. but not here. And they were never built on a brown field or in a flood zone. Right, and so these are the problems that we have in Bridgeport. Okay. And our kids are not disposable. 